Lag Game Club. Welcome to the Nerd Lag Game Club podcast, the podcast where we play games instead of reading books. I'm Corey, and I'm joined by three party members today. Lauren. Hey. Tunza. What's up? And Dan Boy. Hello. In this episode of the Game Club, we're checking out a student project game and playing 2017's Fractured Minds. Fractured Minds was developed by Emily Mitchell and was ended up being published by Wired Productions. This was interesting because, as I stated before, this game was created for a project in school by Emily Mitchell. An interesting little fact, the thing I wanted to point out, is a magazine called Critical Hit compared this game to the psychological horror film The Babadook, which is one of my favorite movies. Um, so it's kind of interesting that they tie in together. Before we get any further into Fractured Minds, I want to give the spoiler warning, and I'd recommend playing this before listening to the episode. This was our short game for the month of September, and I'm going to give a brief summary of the story for Fractured Minds. Uh, there's not a whole lot to the story, but it's basically you play as a person that is living with mental illness and just kind of their insight on life as they experience things. It, I guess it, it hits from what I could, what I've read is it kind of hits the feelings of isolation of being trapped and just kind of feeling doomed in everyday situations. But that's a probably about the, the most to the story. There's not a whole lot to it. The game's very short. Each episode, we break up the main points of the game between us and starting with gameplay and mechanics, Tunza is going to tell us that for Fractured Minds. Gameplay is basically uh, you shift to kind of move at a little faster pace. Uh, you Well, I played mouse and keyboard, so it was shift. I think it's a B or something, RB maybe, on the controller, because it had the controller scheme up too. It's like all the same. Uh, click to interact or A. And then you just kind of go around walking and moving stuff, at least for the first level. The next level, you pin the tail on the donkey. <laughs> uh, uh, the next one was like interacting with like just touching people's like just touching people's phones, I, I guess. So game or gameplay wise is just each each level has a mini like puzzle to it where you interact with the environment and go through. Uh, first one is just moving uh objects to find keys the second one was basically playing like pin the tail on a donkey um the, the following one was just there the third one is just like an interacting with like certain people's phones no it's the symbols on their back yeah but i think you just are you clicking i don't remember if you had to click their back uh, you just touch them in general but it's based on what the symbol is on their back you have to like match that little board yeah, so then you go through, you match the board, you cross the street, uh, then you go through, uh, that's when you learn you can jump, and <laughs> you uh, go down, like, a couple, like, little, like, platforms into, like, an underwater living room type level. Uh, your objective is just to search for batteries, you interact with, like, the environment to put in, like, you need the t batteries to turn on the TV, to get a code. And then you move on to the next area, then you're just turning nozzles. It's, uh, the gameplay is very just... It's, it's very simple. Yeah. Um, but we'll, we'll put a pin in that stuff for right this second. Uh, we're going to move into Lauren's section, where she's going to tell us about the art design for Fractured Minds. Okay, so I didn't really do, like, a deep dive, because I, I don't know how much of a deep dive you can really do on, like, a 20-minute game. But the best way to describe it is that it kind of looks like it was just made in Unity. I don't know if that's the case or not. It very well could have been. But, I mean, all the objects look very, like, you know, your standard, like, oh, here's a chair you can place in a world. Like here's a sense. table you can... Yeah, like, there wasn't a ton to it that seemed like it wasn't, like, just generic objects in the environment 
The only things that are different are like every once in a while you see like drawings on the walls. And you'll see like or writing on the walls look like they could have been written with crayon. Um, there is the one where you pick up a snow globe and then you go inside of it and that's like the level. And that one I did like. I thought that looked pretty cool. It's like in the the outer uh, layer of it when you're looking around when you're in it you can see the environment like that's outside of it and that's pretty good but that's all I really got I mean there's not a lot to it I mean props to her for making it especially I just seen she was 17 when she made it so yeah she was a, a youngin yeah um, so Dan is going to be up next and he's going to tell us about some sound design and music for Fractured Minds. So the sound in this game, um, you just have like your basic sounds, like everything has their normal sounding sounds, like cars going by, um, while you're just controlling the character as you walk around, like depending on like what happens like at one point like i saw like the the monster like figure thing like on the wall or whatever and then character's heart like started like beating like real fast and you can kind of like hear it like beating and beating and beating um so that's that's kind of it with like the game sounds i mean there was music um and the music was made by a K angle. That's that's about it. Like there's, it's it's so short. Like there's, it's it's really hard to really say much about it. You know? Yeah, I also kind of feel like ambient music, sounds. I feel like the music's kind of forgettable. But yeah, okay. So we'll transition into where we just kind of talk about anything that made an impact. Um, I, I guess I will lead off here. Lauren kind of mentioned it, but the snow globe, I thought that was really cool. I think that's the best looking section of the game. Uh, but mm-hmm. you start in a room that has like a fireplace and like two like chairs that you picture like an old guy smoking a cigar, like sitting in front of it. He'd have like a bear rug or something. That's what I imagine <laughs> that room being like. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. you start there and then there's not really much going on. And then you realize that you can like pick up the, the snow globe. So you like your character goes to pick it up and then you, what? it shows you like getting into it. Isn't that how that, isn't that how you transition? Do you pick it up? No, at least not for me. I picked up like a, uh, uh, uh like a, a magnifying mirror. glass. Oh, oh that's what it is. It's glass. the magnifying glass that you pick up and you like, it's almost like looking into it and like a yeah like a zoomed in version but then you like are inside of it which is pretty cool yeah. um the only thing i felt like was kind of generic at this part was the fact that like when you go inside it's the same room you're already in so it's like inception like three times um i would it would have been yeah. cool if it was just like a like a a more distorted room or like just a different room entirely i think that could have been kind of neat but i do like this this mission here or well chapter um i think it was like one of the better ones one of the ones that i think stands out for me um in this little baby experience <laughs> but <laughs> that's uh that's that's the first thing that really made an impact for me i mean I think uh, the weird messages on the walls, like when the lightning flashes or like the the things that made the horror out el- the horror element were neat. Like uh, I also just for some reason, I got really like shits and gigs for just uh, like just <laughs> just do a pin the tail on the donkey <laughs> for like no reason. <laughs> I also love that it like scolds you. You're like, nope, can't open that present yet. You're not allowed to. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, my bad. But yeah, my it's funny because early on in the game, like chapter one and two, it kind of has like a horror element in the aspect of like, oh, is this creature that keeps showing up? Is it going to like try to kill me? Like what's going to happen? 
and then like later on it's just kind of there <laughs> dude i'll i'll be honest i don't know if i like zoned out or like what happened i don't remember chapter one at all it's uh just waking Moving up pain. it's like waking up out of your bed um starts with like a like a more cinematic scene where it like you're laying in bed and then you glance over and it's like in the doorway and then like you just wake up and then you search the room for like a million keys isn't the searching for all the keys isn't that chapter two no you have to just pin the tail on the donkey yeah so it's the order is the reason why this is this is confusing to me is because on steam the achievement says uh, there's an achievement for like taking like so many tries to find like the right key, like picking mm-hmm. like the wrong key enough. But it says that's chapter two. That's why I was really confused. Yeah, I noticed that too, and I was like, "There's only one key in chapter two. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. That's why I was confused. That's why I thought I like miss something and i was like uh what happened to chapter yeah. one i don't know if it's just maybe it like got screwed up somehow yeah. but the chapters in order it's like chapter one is the bedroom where you're finding the keys <laughs> okay. Okay. chapter That's two is the birthday party chapter three is the uh snow globe room chapter four is street crossing chapter five is the room with the red light it's like a big fish bowl or something yeah. like the yeah you're like in a water level yeah and then chapter six is like the furnace room where you have to like time the pistons to yeah. unlock like the the heart that's just randomly there like in chains so yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if that's a mistake i'm, I'm not sure I you need to time something I, mean, I just clicked on him. It, it's you just you just have to click the right one when it, he's like standing over it. Oh, I just clicked him. I don't even think I clicked him in an order. <laughs> I do. I honestly think I just clicked and then I don't even notice he was there. Yeah, I, I, like you noticed him in the beginning, and then I walked back, and then I just started clicking stuff, and then I was like too busy <laughs> just clicking things, I think, to realize what I was doing. But I just had so many issues with this game like i guess i'll just throw it out now props to her for making it by herself but while i was playing this i had four different times where my character just got stuck in place and i could not move and i'd have to shut the game off like close it and then reopen it but like you didn't have that issue tons of when you were talking about it and then i just had my game crashed when i initially launched it and then Lauren played it on the Steam Deck, and she didn't have that problem. So I'm like, I don't know what was going on, but I just could not move. And like Lauren was sitting by me when I was playing it, and she's like, "What's going on?" And I'm like, "It yet again, I'm stuck on nothing. Like I'm just standing in, like in the middle of a room, nothing's mm-hmm. around me, and I can't move." And then the whole like water hallway where you have to like climb down on those pieces of metal or mm-hmm. whatever they are. I didn't realize you could jump. Oh, yeah. So I could, I just kept falling in the water and I'm like, man, this last one's too far. I can't just like hop down on it. So then like after a couple tries, I was like, is there any other commands? And then sure enough, you could jump. And I'm like, it would have been nice for you to like notate that at any point during the game that you could jump. (laughs) I'm just a gamer who spams jump regardless of what I'm doing. Well, I assume because it's more like a walking simulator that, like, you didn't have the option to jump. Yeah. Like, 90% of, like, any walking simulator type game that I've ever played, you don't have that option. It's like, you can interact with items, and you can move, and, like, some of them will let you run. But I was like, that's it, usually. So I was like, I didn't think about it. And then, like I said, after a couple times of drowning... I was like, okay, well, let me mess with the control and see if there's, like, anything else. And I'm like, oh, you can jump. And then I was like, okay, now I can move on. But, yeah, I I ended up getting all the achievements for it. There's nine. nine total. You pretty much get them as you're playing. There's only one really weird one. Um, 
it's like seeing the tall guy at the crosswalk and it's like RNG kind of like mm. it can either happen in 30 seconds or it can take up to 10 minutes for it to spawn it happened in 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. So it, it just, it's completely random. And I had eight of them when I finished the game and I'm like, what is this last one? And I went back to the level and I looked around and I was like, all right, I looked it up and it was like, yeah, like you just have to kind of wait by the crosswalk or near the crosswalk. Um, and then he'll like show up and you just have to look at him or whatever. And I'm like, oh, okay. And then a lot of people are like, yeah, it can happen. You know, like it took me like 10 minutes before him for he spawned. And I'm like, why? So I would just, like, I was just sitting there. And then like when he spawned, like right before he spawns or as he, he spawns, like, your sound gets all like distorted and like sounds like a I don't know like like a horror game yeah like yeah. interference with like the sound yeah that's and, the only thing I picked up on so that that that, that was kind of interesting and then you can uh, you can get hit by the cars which I thought was pretty amusing yeah I got hit by them a couple <laughs> times <laughs> um, how about you Lauren anything that stands out I already said the snow globe portion. I did really like that. The, I guess the whole concept of the game was good. To see, like artistic wise, it be like improved, and maybe just add a little more to it. Yeah, I think it's stays... like the concept is good. I think like. The way they do the storytelling is fine too. Yeah, it does. Like, a good I would job. just like to see like more resources poured into it. You know, make it a little longer. Yeah, longer than the fifteen minutes if you're just going through it. Um, yeah, but I think overall, like it stays on theme pretty well. Um, you mm -hmm. obviously pick up on the fact that like it's some sort of like mental illness that like your character mm -hmm. is dealing with and then um it really shows at the end when you like free the like the heart out of the chains and like he holds like a mirror up to you and you like see like the monster's mm -hmm. face and then transitions into like a smile like like oh like you know this is me like this is how i perceive myself so i think it does a really good job of staying on theme there's just not a whole lot of like substance to anything yeah. yeah. Um the the puzzles are really simple. It's just a matter of like finding where they are in each room. Like uh in the yeah. fishbowl alarm one, you just basically just have to open stuff and find the batteries and try not to step in the red light or you step in it like 50 times and then you get the achievement like do you not know how to listen? Like yeah. Yeah, but I got that immediately. <laughs> it, it popped up and I was like, there's a red light I stepped in. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so <laughs> like that one was a little weird. The pin the tail and the donkey's pretty funny. Like it just doesn't really fit kinda because it's just like, oh well, here's a birthday yeah. party. But, uh, yeah, I mean I it's really hard to talk about. Like I said, you could if you knew at where everything was. <laughs> there's probably a speed run of this, right? Yeah. Oh, probably, no, I guarantee. Like yeah. three minutes. I was gonna say it's got to be quick. Like, yeah, I'm sure there's quick. some. I mean, it's also like a game for like you know if you want like if you're like an achievement hunter. It's on like consoles yeah. and stuff too. It yeah. looks like uh, on console, the speed run is 2 minutes and 37 seconds. Damn. One I, I month can see ago. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, you, once you know, like, what you need to do, because, like, the uh, nothing changes. Like, the items you need will always be in the same spot. Um, yeah. Right. So, if you immediately know what you need to do to solve the puzzle in the room, you could just grab stuff real fast and, like, run to where you need to go. I will give it some props during the crosswalk portion your character breathes like you can hear them breathing mm -hmm. sounds mm -hmm. sounds great it sounds really good yeah yeah panicked 
Yeah, it's like a, it's a, a more like a fast paced breathing, almost like if someone was like following you. And you were like starting yeah. to get like stressed out over it or like worried. So it's like she's breathing kind of heavy or he I, it doesn't specify. Are you a guy or a girl? If I get you, whatever you um, want. I, I <laughs> would just assume it's just a girl because oh, isn't yeah. the name kind of based oh. upon her? Pro- like, probably. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure she made like she probably did the breathing. She probably recorded it herself. But yeah, overall, I mean, not a whole lot of substance, but. I think for what it was, is like somebody's like younger kids, like project. Uh, end up winning a little bit of like awards and stuff for, I mean, just a solo project while you're in school, just for, or I'm assuming in school and stuff. I think it's pretty neat. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen better and I've seen worse. Like, well, I mean, it, it, kudos to her. She got it published, you know. She well, like, it. she's, I, I was just looking. She, I was just on the Twitter. And, like, March, she announced she's working on a different game. It's, like, a, it's called, like, Block Feet. And it's, like, mm-hmm. a, like a life sim. In, introducing Block Feet, a colorful cube town sim. Uh, it looks cool. It definitely looks like more of something... Like, uh, actually, like, up probably, like, Warren's Alley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, Maybe, like, a Stardew valley S thing. It looks cool. I like nice. that. Yeah, I mean, it's been, what, five years since she released this, so I'm sure she's improved quite a bit since, like, her first game. Yeah, and, like, she probably got, like, some sort of funding, even though I see, like, 80% of the game, like, sales from that game went to charity, so it's not like you're making a whole lot of money off $3. Yeah. Yeah, she did a good job. Um, I th- we'll go around and just see how long it took us to complete the game. Mine was much higher, but completing the game was lower. But when I went back to get the achievement, I forgot to look beforehand, and I sat there for like ten minutes. So mine was thirty-eight minutes total. I was twenty minutes on the dot. Mine was a good old seventeen minutes. I'm a speedrun. Yeah, speedrunner yeah, Dan. Yeah. He's just start speedrunning <laughs> on Twitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Lauren? Do you know? Um, I think it was twenty minutes. It just says point four hours. Whatever. Uh, Reminds is twenty one. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah, I pretty short. Experience. I can't tell. This is uh, you know, something you want to check out. It is cheap, so you knock it out in less than an hour. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's it's a good like achievement game, and it's a uh, I don't know casual, very <laughs> casual. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else before we move on? You guys want to talk about for fractured minds? Uh, no, I think we're good. All mm-hmm. right. So each episode we go around and we find out if we would recommend the game and why or why not. So starting with tons of this episode, would you recommend this game and why or why not? Oh, such a hard thing. I, if you want to support and have your money go to a charity, yeah, for sure. I think it's fine for what it is. It's just going to be hard to get people I know to play this. So maybe not. Uh, I'm really curious to see what Tony would have said. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he would have hated it. So yeah, much. I know. <laughs> that's that's where I'm like, oh, maybe I would. So much. So I, I want to say for knowing what it is as somebody's project and then it going to charity and for being at two bucks. Sure. And you can get achievements for, uh, I, is it the same price on console? Like if you, that's an easy, easy gamer score I don't or know. platinum, I, I think it's assume. worth it. If it's, yeah, ex- if, it's, if it's expensive on console, that would be, I would be like, be no way. Uh, like for two bucks to get like uh, all your achievements and stuff, I think that'd be really good. What about you, Lauren? When I first started playing it, my opinion was very different. But <laughs> like Tenza said, for somebody's school project, it the idea was to like try to give people a way of understanding like mental health issues, anxiety, stuff like that, which I can always appreciate. Uh, 
and it's like two bucks to porch charity like yeah i mean for two bucks it's why a, not have a dollar fifty you on consoles okay so yeah like you wouldn't pay like less than you know a cup of coffee for oh, no. 20, 30 minutes of your time. <laughs> Just a coffee a day. Yeah. Yeah, you get it. You get it. A candy bar? The price of a candy bar? Yeah. Uh, what about you, Dan? <laughs> so I, I had the same thinking as like Tunza and Lauren where it's like, it is really short and it's kind of hard to really be like no i don't think like anyone should be playing this but i also don't really want to say yes just because it's like like we said there there's not a whole lot of like sustenance sub substance sub, that word in <laughs> this game so it 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 kind of boils down to you know if you have two dollars just laying around and you want something really short just to play through maybe maybe learn something about some mental health and go for it you know yeah i i don't know i this <laughs> this one's like right down there with like donut county for me um <laughs> donut county i i still i it, I I wouldn't recommend that game ever. This one because it's so cheap and because it's like a school project by like a teenager, I'm less harsh on it. Um, I enjoy that it goes to charity, and maybe if you're like starting out, like wanting to make your own game, it might be something to look into just to kind of see how she approached doing stuff. And you don't necessarily when you start need to be like this top tier like artist like coder like you don't need to be like the best like you can do with do stuff with what skills you have and i think that shows a good example of it for two you bucks, have to do it yeah i think it's just a it's like an inspirational story um i'm a huge advocate for mental health so i enjoy that it goes towards that and tells you the story of that and what people deal with on a, a like a daily basis, just doing like the most simple of tasks. So sure, I had a ton of technical issues. So like, would I buy it again? No, probably not. But it's uh, like Lauren said, it's a coffee a day, a candy bar a day. You probably spend a dollar fifty on something stupid anyway, so you could at least get a half hour of enjoyment. Yeah, and like and like I said, if, if you look and see on Xbox or PS4, it's an easy trophy or platinums, like or uh, achievement or platinums. I think that's like easily worth it. Yeah, I, I guess like... as as we're at winding down, I just want to I guess shout out that she's still working on games. It wasn't just like a one off, like oh I made this in school and then I went on to do something else. She just kept up with it, and it looks like from what she's. Like I mean, she just only posted this on Twitter in March. It it's a, it's a hell of an improvement. Yeah, I mean, follow your dreams, right? Mm. So that's uh, I think that's where we're at. We're kind of like yeah and no at the same time, but because it's so cheap, just go for it. Give it a shot. Play something at least different. Check it out. Yeah, play something different. Get an easy platinum trophy. You can add it to your checklist if you're one of those people that go for platinums you know, on like the the Sony side of stuff I don't ever know what it's called on Xbox it's just a fucking gamer it's score achievement, I think. achievement on it. Yeah. Gamer it's what it usually it used to be man wait I do have one review that like is kind of interesting it's a not recommended, which most of them are recommended. Mm -hmm. And they're just people like saying like nice things about it. this one says, I feel bad not recommending this, but it is more of a well done high school project than a game. It basically is what it is. Yeah, that's that's how I feel. <laughs> like Yeah, I would like, agree what? with it. I, when I was well, playing it, I kind of felt like that sometimes too. Just... Like if I didn't know anything about going like going into it, it's like I would have definitely been like way harsher. Like it would have been like 
okay, this was like weird, but like knowing it's like, oh, a project somebody just did on their end. But like, that's what the reviews are. It's like everybody tiptoeing because like no one knows really how to feel. <laughs> no one wants to be right. hurtful and no one like, like, like there was, it's not like a somebody that's been doing it their whole life making it either. Or, right. It's, it's not like you're pulling, right. like, say, a guy from like, I, I don't know, like a big studio, like, EA or something like leaves and then the company, he did a solo project, and, and this yeah. is his project after working at EA for twenty years. I'd be like, really, yeah. man? Like, or even like a year, I would be <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. This I, like, because it was a high school project. I don't want to be like I said, super harsh. I could have came in here and like gave it all types of backlash, but I just yeah. take it at a uh, you know like. I don't know what that it's, expression is. It's one of those is. things where it's just like good for what it is. Yeah, that's exactly. Mm-hmm. It's just good to, for what it is. To take it for face value. Is that like the expression? Uh, yeah. 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 Um, and you know, if it, it, don't come into it expecting a triple A experience. Like, if that's yeah. the mindset you come in with, you are going to be very disappointed. Great. I had a lot of fun today talking about Fractured Minds on NLGC. But before we go, we wanted to share where you can find us online. First, we have a YouTube channel called NerdLag where we'll be uploading some great content. So make sure to subscribe for the latest videos. We have a Facebook page at NerdLag Game Club. Make sure to like the page so you can get the latest news about the podcast. You can also find us over on Twitter at NerdLag where we share some of the latest gaming news and stuff we find interesting. And lastly, we have a Discord at NerdLag where you can talk to us in voice chat and join in some discussion about everything nerdy, like video games, anime, movies, and chat with like-minded people. If you'd like to join, ask for an invite. Uh, We also want to thank everyone that tuned in for this episode. And if you enjoyed it, make sure you share it with your friends. And also follow us on Spotify. It really helps. On to the final credits. At the end of every episode, we kind of just go around and talk about any gaming news, our gaming experiences, or just anything going on in the world of Nerdlag. And we just talk for a bit to close out the episode. Is there anything you guys want to talk about? We need a... Before I Raft off, update. Raft update! <laughs> yeah. Still have not played Raft. <laughs> Still have played Raft. Soon. Yeah. Valorant update. We've ranked bronze again. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're still bronze? Bronze 2. <laughs> bronze 2. We've moved up a little Yeah, bit. we did. We did. We started Except off. Adam. Adam is what, a silver one? Yeah. Oh, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he's better than y'all. I mean, yeah. I'm not surprised, man. Yeah. At, well, he also has, like, quadruple, like, the... Like, me and Dan combined computer gaming level experience. <laughs> yeah. I. Uh... He brings up Counter-Strike all the time. I need to uh, make like a sound bit for a raft update so I can play it before I ask you guys <laughs> during this segment because it's just going to keep happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's what I kind of look forward to every time. Yeah, now <laughs> it's like every time you just scratch off the whiteboard and put like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. a new number. Another two weeks without any raft of it. Like, no, no raft yeah. improvements. All Is three that... podcasts without <laughs> raft update. Yeah, it's funny because like you, it's not even like you guys play it and haven't finished it. You literally have not opened it <laughs> since we brought it up. Yeah, um, I don't think I've opened it like well times. So that always makes me laugh. Uh, me and Lauren both picked up the Made in Abyss game, and okay. it kind of got shit on in reviews, but I'm really enjoying it. Me you too. Know I played it for a while. Well, the biggest complaint in reviews, one, a lot of people compare the graphics to like a PS3 game, which oh, I don't know so why. It's one of those type of things. I don't know why that it, it's PS3 specifically. Like it, when you read the reviews, it's never like, oh, this looks like an Xbox 360 game or this looks like a GameCube game or like anything else. It's literally always this looks like an early PS3 game. And I'm like, why is Can everyone even... zoned in on that? I watched you stream, and I I don't think I would... I would just consider it being, like, a JRPG style. Yeah, well... Like, they all kind of have that, like, look to them. Any game that's, like, an anime-ass game has that art style almost. Well, the, the thing about the art style is, like, 
it kind of matches the anime. Yeah. Like, yeah. the anime kind of has, like, that, like, cartoony look to it. It's really bright and colorful. It's not, good. It's not like, the most beautiful thing you're ever going to see. But I, the world is, is cool, and, like, the concept of what's going on in the world is really fun. Another big, re like, complaint in people's reviews is the spawn rate of enemies, but it it's a survival RPG, so there being a ton of enemies and them spawning, like, quickly, that doesn't bother me. Like, it makes it more challenging. It makes you have to, like, should I fight these enemies here? Like, do I have the resources to keep moving down in the abyss? Like, I think it just adds to, like, the suspense and, like, there's times where you feel like, okay, like I'm really far down. Like I'm a thousand meters down. Am I going to be able to get myself back up to the city with the items that I have, um, or like the health I have, or, you know, my character's starving. So now my stamina meter drains quicker, which is, I like those little things that they added. Those are like nice, like features to it where it doesn't just feel like I'm running down. I can kill every enemy I see. Like, there's no, I don't know how to word it, there's, like, no fear of you made, like, going down and dying and losing all your stuff. If that makes mm -hmm. sense. Like, I've done good so far in uh, my playthrough. I have not yet died. I got really close because I fell off the cliff and landed on another cliff and I had, like, ten health. But I was like, okay, I'm good, I still haven't died. But, like, everything will kill you. If you fall off, like, an edge, it hurts you. Like, it, you know, as you come out of the abyss, you feel the effects, which can cause you to, like, throw up, feel, like, nauseous. You can be attacked by enemies while that's going on. But if your character does throw up, then your, like, hunger meter goes down, like, a lot. So it's, like, every move has to be tactical. And I don't think people... I don't know if people don't know going into it and that's why they don't like it or if they just don't like that because it puts like so much stress on you but i i find it enjoyable i don't know if lauren's there with me but that's what i enjoy about it, is the fact that like i have to tactically plan out my every move like if i need to get to this area like i know that this path takes less hunger takes less health there's less like bigger enemies i don't have to use like as many resources um, but overall, I think that's what that's like the charm for me is just having that. OK, I got to plan it out. I can't just run in and do whatever. Yeah, so. I mean, I mean, the most important part is you're liking it. So, like, no matter what reviews say. Like, you know, you're enjoying it. Yeah, I think that sometimes the, reviews are just bad and like things are just getting reviewed bum now, regardless of like if it's good or bad, just because people are having issues with like properties and all that fun stuff. And it's a little bit sad. So like now I just take everything with a grain of salt. I, I just think you shouldn't determine your gaming experience on reviews. If it's Yeah, like even our recommendations, like right. us recommending a game. It's like yeah. you, if it's not for you, it's not for you. Right. If. If we think you like something, you may not like it. If we dislike something, you may love it. But that's what's, that's what's great about gaming as a whole is that we are allowed to do that. I can like something and you cannot like it. And I would hope that we could have a discussion like we do in the podcast and not attack one another. But just explain, like, what is it, what is it about the game that you don't like? Or what about the game like keeps bringing you back to it. Some of my favorite games are games that have issues, but I enjoy them. And like, I'm not blind to the point where like, Oh, like this game's perfect. This is a flawless game. It's like, no, it has problems, but you know, is it nostalgia? Maybe. Or is it just the charm? Is it the story? Is it just some property that you really like? Like going into this, I love the maiden abyss anime i think the story's cool i like the way it looks i like that it's not just your like run-of-the-mill anime so going into it i'm like going in with a positive mind so i guess after this big old rant just 
take a review with a grain of salt, like tons of said, play what you want to play. And who cares what other people think? This happened in the last episode, too, when tons of, or Dan was talking about Saints Row. It reviewed poorly, but he finished it. He enjoyed it. And he even streamed it, had like a really weird glitch happen. And it was funny. It was so great. Yeah. So, I like, I, I just, it just take what you want out of your gaming experience. That's I, I'm not to be like a lecture at the end of this episode, well, but that's just that's just what I'm weird. in. Yeah, weirdly enough, somebody earlier at work was talking about uh, they're like, oh, I felt really bad because one of you pre-ordered Cyberpunk when it came out, and I was like, okay, like yeah, that game like struggled, and it's a lot better now, but it's like, did they enjoy it? Like, if it's for you, it's for you. Like, people still play that game and make it like community driven it had bugs but like i didn't have it like i didn't experience half the shit i watched people have on twitter and stuff yeah i didn't finish it but like i i never like i had one time where like somebody's legs didn't load that was like the most glitchy thing i had but the, uh, that's funny lieutenant like that. dan <laughs> lieutenant dan <laughs> <laughs> <You should>, yeah <laughs> it's just so like dumb because like I understand like bad things and like and then I look at like I I was like oh it might be it sucks that it sounds like they're not going to support Cyberpunk anymore this is going to be like their last like big DLC but like also they're going to be working on The Witcher but I was just thinking of like um, I talked about No Man's Sky the other day I was mainly disappointed with that game because they said multiplayer and then me and Dan tried to play together and couldn't yeah, good times. <laughs> and then now it's a completely different game, which we could play together. And it's just like too much yeah. for me. But like, it's like, holy we, we shit. We did play a... together the one time. We did. We did. It, but it's it, like, don't write it off immediately. And then like, if, if, it's up, if it's for you, it's for you. You'll know. Yeah, I um to kind of deviate off of this topic, they did announce and it's the first time I've had like real interest um, in the Assassin's Creed franchise. They announced today that the next game will take place and you're kind of like a ninja in like Japanese, like I don't know what year it's based out of, but like old traditional like Japan, but you're like a ninja is Mm -hmm. who you'll be playing as. Isn't this supposed to be their last Assassin's Creed? Oh, maybe. Like, uh, well, there's no, they're uh, supposed to turn it into a games of service. Like, it's supposed to be Assassin's Creed, and then, like, they'll just keep updating it. Oh, like, I how, like, I don't know if this is that one. I didn't, I didn't see this. It's called, like, Red, Red Point or Red something. Code name. Code name Code Red name or right. something. Oh, it's, it's not out yet. No, they literally just announced it today. No, I meant like is like is that like an actual like name or is it just his code name? Like it's titled code name. I, I don't no, know. That's that's the title. Is that what it's gonna be no. named? That, from my understanding, yes. But uh yeah, I think that, that looks like it could be an interesting concept. And I mean, I would play as a ninja. That would be cool. Uh, the Assassin's Creed games, I feel like as soon as they changed up their like formula, like with Odyssey or uh, Origins and Odyssey. I really like them. I liked 1, 2 uh, quite a bit. Then the other ones, I kind of fell off. 3 was weird. And then Black Flag, I had issues on the computer, or on the Xbox One when it released. And then I never really went back to them. But I played Origins and Odyssey, and I like that they're more like RPG-ish. I didn't get to play Valhalla yet. But I'm sure I like it. They're yeah. They're good. They do the worlds very well. But uh, Lauren, Lauren's probably gonna get that one, huh? The yeah. Ninja, the ninja one. You love maybe. ninjas. I do. I do like ninjas, so maybe I'd have to see gameplay and see what it looks like. It's still really early, so. Right. Well, now I'm confused because there's an Assassin's Creed Mirage. Yeah. So is Mirage, this like a? I, I, Yes, comes out next year. Yeah, I'm so confused because 
this website was like people who liked odyssey valhalla and origins are gonna have to get adjust to for a mirage and it's like why are they going they're going back to just the batman combat <laughs> or like not like or like linear storytelling because like I, I don't know i mean i am now i'm curious because if they're doing two different games in two different styles that will be cool i think branch Thanks. out um they're so from what I'm reading, I don't know if I'm reading like this 100% like into it, into it, but there is like three, four games, kind of. Yeah, there's so it Mirage looks... Mirage one, there's Codename Red, which is the ninja one, and then there's a Codename, it's like Hex, which are all kind of coming out, which they have like their own like stories, their own Assassin's Creed experiences and then there is also they codename red and codename hex are part of a game or i guess i don't know what it's considered assassin's creed codename infinity which is a hub That's... that will connect players through different types of the games i guess also i wonder if this and then is it'll also be... have like the multiplayer portion of like Assassin's Creed. That, that must be what that infinite or whatever is must be what I'm thinking of is yeah. like what they announced that they were gonna do only one more Assassin's Creed and then you're probably just gonna all be based off of that one. Well, that would be cool though if like yeah. they just release Infinity and then like every time they update it's like okay well now you can play as a ninja now you can play as this now you can play as this. Um, I almost can, like I would just want it. I would just want it to be cheaper. Like, don't full price me every expansion, especially when you're releasing that rapid. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that. Like, release that if the way that I would want to see it is like release Infinity for 40 and then like you could do a season pass for 40 or something or you could do like each one for like 10 bucks. If you're going to have like a schedule like that and it's going to have like a lot of like grind, like a bit of grinding, like to get stuff. I even like as much as I don't really like subscription services and stuff, I would just rather I don't know how I'd rather pay. I just wouldn't want to pay 60 bucks multiple times a year to just continue something I'm already doing. Yeah, well, or $70 now it's 70, right? Uh, it's every every sports game. Well, yeah, I don't play sports games. So. Yeah, that's what sports games are all about now. But uh, yeah, and you guys got anything else? Yeah, I think we went on a good tangent at this end. Yeah. yeah. Lauren? Nope. All right. Well, I had fun having this little extra time at the end of this episode, but I think it's time for us to install the next game and get ready for the next episode. So thank you for listening, and we will see you in about two weeks for the next episode. Peace. Bye. Bye.